One, two, three, four, and step two, three, four. Keep those knees high. Welcome to the Hypo Size class at the YHPA. Yup, we're here at your local hypothalamus pituitary access to wear some spandex, have some fun, and understand a little bit more about these two brain glands. The hypothalamus receives information about both the internal and external environments through both the nervous system and chemical signaling. Its job is to give directives to the rest of the body to act on that information. It acts like a portion of the brain and also like a gland. It plays roles in both the nervous and endocrine systems, but we'll be focusing on its endocrine function here. The hypothalamus sits below the thalamus, uh, hypo means below, and above the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland hangs below the hypothalamus on the pituitary stalk. The pituitary is also sometimes called the hypophysis. The pituitary has two parts, anterior and posterior. Together, the pituitary looks like a boxing punching bag, or um, another body part that's not so good to punch. We can think of the pituitary as middle management. It takes directions from the hypothalamus and then directs the response to the rest of the body. Let's look at how the pituitary receives directions from the hypothalamus. When the hypothalamus wants to send a message to the anterior pituitary, it secretes hormones into the HPS, or hypophyseal portal system. The HPS is a network of capillaries, so those hypothalamic hormones travel just a few centimeters down the bloodstream to the anterior pituitary where the message is received. This is called paracrine signaling because the responding cells are nearby. Longer range signaling is called endocrine. Anyway, we're representing the HPS capillary network here with this red net. When it comes to the posterior pituitary, however, the hypothalamus doesn't so much send signals as it does just hand hormones off to the posterior pituitary to store for later, when they're really needed. Hormones travel from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary through neurosecretory cells, which have hormone-releasing terminals at the end. The posterior pituitary stores those hypothalamic hormones and releases them when signaled by a feedback loop. What are feedback loops? We'll get to them soon. Let's take a look at the two types of hormones used at the YHPA, tropic hormones and direct hormones. A tropic hormone is any hormone that targets another endocrine gland, glands talking to other glands. Both the hypothalamus and pituitary gland synthesize and send tropic hormones. Tropic hormones generally have the word stimulating or releasing in their names since they stimulate other endocrine glands or cause them to release their own hormones. Let this amazingly dressed exerciser wearing gland-shaped scrunchies next to the tropical palm tree remind you that tropic hormones target glands. Direct hormones target non-endocrine body cells or tissues. Their names don't include words like releasing or stimulating. The hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary synthesize some direct hormones. Direct hormones are also made by the glands that tropic hormones act on. This exercise director represents direct hormones, and he's clearly ready to have a direct effect on his classgoers' bodies. So the release of tropic hormones leads to the release of direct hormones. But what regulates the release of tropic hormones in the first place? Feedback loops use the output of a system as the input that can alter the system's function. It's feedback loops that are responsible for most regulation of the HP axis, which we've represented with feedback from this old school boombox and hula hoops, or loops, hula loops. A fundamental feature of the HP axis feedback loops is that the hypothalamus and pituitary glands have receptors for the direct hormones they manage. In other words, they start a multi-step process that gets direct hormones in the bloodstream, then, since they have receptors for that hormone, they can confirm that the process worked and adjust the amount of tropic hormones they secrete accordingly. These antennas receiving a radio signal on this feedbacky boombox represent the direct hormone receptors in the hypothalamus and pituitary that regulate feedback loops. The HP axis is almost always regulated by negative feedback. The negative in negative feedback means that high blood hormone levels inhibit hormone production in the hypothalamus and pituitary, which, in turn, leads to lower levels of direct hormones. And this instructor giving a negative pep talk to that exerciser is definitely making the number of exercisers go down. It's okay, 80s dude. Sweating to the oldies isn't for everyone. Okay, let's wrap up this hyposize class with a quick rundown of what we did today. The hypothalamus and pituitary, or hypophysis, are glands located in the brain. The HP axis bridges the nervous and endocrine systems, regulating many full-body processes. 
the hypothalamus sends neurological and hormonal signals to the pituitary. The pituitary has two divisions. The anterior pituitary is connected to the hypothalamus through a capillary system called the hypophyseal portal system. The posterior pituitary is connected to the hypothalamus through neurosecretory cells, neurons that directly transmit hypothalamic hormones. Both the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary make two types of hormones. Tropic hormones, which target endocrine glands, and direct hormones, which target non-endocrine body cells and tissues. Finally, the hypothalamus and pituitary have receptors for the direct hormones they manage. High circulating levels of hormone reach the HP axis, activating a negative feedback loop that inhibits hormone production. Negative feedback lowers the concentration of a particular hormone. And there you have it, two structures and their connections. The constant struggle to maintain balance in response to negative feedback and stay upright while hyposizing. Well, time to take a deep breath and start our cooldown. One, two, 